wild releasing video range for all life has to offer. The Altai Mountains of Siberia, the long, long winter is over. But the melting ice has brought a torrent of change. There is turbulence and danger everywhere. These are some of the wildest rapids in the world and many bold adventurers have been attracted to their power. Every year they would come here to risk their lives, for the river gave them freedom. Sasha, the strong leader. Tolia, a wild spirit. Jenya, the doctor. Sasha Schulzik, Tolia's brother, the coal miner. For 16 years, they have shared the excitement of the river and with their team, pushed the limits much further than any other rafters in the world. But their lives have changed. On the river last year, their brotherhood was torn apart by a tragic accident. Four of the team drowned, trying to save their comrades. I don't think it's a terrible way to die. Probably it's, uh, it's one of the best ways to die on the river, uh, trying to save your friends. They die like heroes. I can only dream to die uh, this way. They did. Now they must return to the river to honor their brothers and try and complete an unfinished journey. Sasha Provatorov is a professional photographer, but he's also an insatiable adventurer. He loves taking risks. Sasha has combined his work with his passion for extreme rafting. The new free market economy in Russia has given Sasha the opportunity to publish books and photographs on the Altai Mountains. Sasha is also trained as a cinematographer and has captured some remarkable footage of their rafting trips. For the past 16 years, Sasha and his team have pushed the limits of rafting far beyond the imagination of anyone else in the world. In the West, the most extreme rapids are class six. In Russia, the scale goes to class 10. Sometimes I come in to a very difficult section of the river. You feel that you can do it, but you cannot control the, all the situation at all, not 100%. Do you ask me, is it crazy? Probably, yeah. Probably, yeah. From the position of normal human, it's crazy, of course. In all their years of extreme rafting, Sasha's team had never had an accident. But the tragedy last spring left them all devastated. Sasha had to bring home the bodies of four of his closest friends. Other people might never go rafting again but Sasha believes he must return to the same treacherous river. To do this trip is essential for me, for the memory of these boys. Rafting rivers is a different kind of ordeal for Sasha's wife, Tanya. One time I went rafting with him on the Katun River. I understood what a dangerous activity it is. 
and also what a masculine activity it is. That when you are on the river, you are not only committing yourself to testing the physical strength, but also spiritual strength. The strength to go through a great deal, and not only to keep yourself alive, but also to save your comrades. I'm very worried when he is gone, and the older we get, and more we live together, the harder each trip becomes for me. Overall, this is the right thing for a man to do, and the children will follow him. If he didn't do this, he wouldn't be the same person, and wouldn't be the right man for me. In each of the rafters' homes are the portraits of their comrades who perished last year. And one of them, Andre, who had no father, had been raised by Sasha and Tanya. He had died trying to save Sasha's life. Oftentimes at night, I walk in by the sound of their voices. Their voices are happy, they are laughing, they are talking. And I feel they are still with us. I just wait and wait and wait for him to come back. And every time that he goes away, it's harder and harder for me to wait for him. Like most of the families who live in Siberian cities, Sasha and Tanya have a two-room flat, which is always busy with three children and a dog. But before an expedition, it's especially crowded with rafting friends. Fortunately, there's no word for privacy in the Russian language. Yeah, our adventures bring us together, of course. In Siberia, you can't buy a raft. Sasha has to build them himself, and that means finding raw materials. With a production shutdown in the local tractor factory, there could be something useful to be scavenged. These engines were bound for former Soviet states before they became independent. Now they have nowhere to go. But with Siberian ingenuity, Anything can be transformed into a raft. Sasha gets an enormous amount of satisfaction out of doing things himself and finding ways of creating something out of nothing. Getting around the system is Sasha's speciality. In one of his friend's apartments, the team is making the airtight flotation bags for the rafts from material once used to line the fuel tanks of aircraft. With a high rate of divorce in Russia, there's always somebody with a vacant apartment where a raft can be built. There are people coming from the other side of the world for this memorial journey. John Weir is an Australian, but his heart lies in Siberia. As a professional whitewater rafter, John has seen rapids all over the world, but none compare to Siberia. John was away when the accident had happened and was deeply shocked by the death of his friends. He drafted with the Siberians for many years and believed that they were invincible. Well, I came to Siberia back in 1989 as the leader of an Australian whitewater team. 
I got so enchanted with what I experienced in those days that I came back year after year. Through those experiences, met a lot of really good people here, and, and those people really were what drew me back. It's the relationships that I have with those people. <laughs> In Sasha's hometown of Barnul, John meets up with another rafter who's arrived from America. Jane Williams works as a professional interpreter and shares John's fascination with the Russian people. Siberia is so far from what people imagine. People back home ask me, God, isn't it cold over there? What's it like? Is, why, why would you go to Siberia? I said, oh, it's in the summer, it's green, and the weather's hot, and we get tan. And then they say, you can get tan in Siberia? This is really the heart of Russia, the heart and soul of Russia out here in Siberia. They've taught me about humanity. I think I've learned more about humanity from these people and, and what humans are able to do and put up with than anywhere else. The Russians were brought up to have an almost religious respect for communism. But in the new Russia, they don't really know what to believe in at all. But they still do really believe in the idea of courage. And there's a tremendous respect for the war heroes of the Soviet Union. And it's this tradition of stubbornness in the face of almost overwhelming odds that I believe is a big part of the reason they take such incredible risks out on the rivers. In the local public banya, another ancient Russian tradition, almost as old as the Roman baths, John meets up with Sasha to discuss plans for the rafting expedition. <laughs> the banya is also an excuse for a social gathering, and everyone from kids to grandfathers meet and beat at least once a week at the banya. <laughs> <laughs> Sasha Provatorov and I met up at the Chuya Rally, which is an international whitewater competition that I came to. Over the years, we became very good friends and, and had very good times together and travelled a lot throughout Russia. Now Sasha's family responsibilities have tempered his risky adventures. But he must go out again to bring his shattered team back together. So, oh, really? <laughs> you ready for this trip, Sasha? Prepared? Yeah. Yeah. It will be tough. Uh -huh. Very yeah, tough. very tough trip. They leave the town of Barnul, heading south towards the Altai Mountains on the border of Mongolia. Siberia is known as the land of exiles, a place of punishment. Its vast territory covers five million square miles, and it's larger than China or the United States. On Siberian roads, it takes two days to do the 500 kilometers to the river. The Russians don't build better roads, they just build bigger trucks. In an old ambulance and an army truck, they travel to the end of the road in the Altai Mountains. There are 23 people in the expedition, gear for five rafts, and supplies to last three weeks. The first rapids, which were on the Majoy River, we really planned them as a rehearsal for the more difficult rapids ahead. This was really the first time that the full team had been back together since the time of the terrible accident. This year, the water levels are lower, but this has exposed dangerous rocks and created another hazard. You know, after, after last year, uh, I feel not, not only fear, I, uh, I feel much fear for my friends. The water here is so cold. It comes down from the glaciers and snowmelt. In fact, 
Most of the deaths that happen here every year are caused by hypothermia. Rafting in Russia has its origins in an untamed frontier. Everyone gets together and they overcome obstacles and no matter how much they have to suffer, they'll make it to the end of the trip. I think that Siberians especially, there's a tradition among the men of going out on hunting trips, going out fishing, and being gone for long periods of time. Because a lot of times it was difficult to farm the land here and so they would just go out and be gone in the wilderness. It's an escape for them, it's a way to prove themselves, it's a way to, to challenge themselves in a way that they could never be challenged, especially under the old socialist system, where there wasn't any challenge in a man's life that would be meaningful for him. Most people's jobs were kind of a joke. No matter how hard you worked, you wouldn't be rewarded for working better than someone else. These rafts are all local designs. The dry suits and even the life jackets are also homemade. But dangerous rapids are not the only hazard. The pine forests of the Altai are swarming with lethal ticks. One in a hundred carries encephalitis, but that's no problem. Sasha's team can build a raft in a couple of hours. Even the waterproof gear bags double as pumps for the rafts. The most startling design to evolve from Siberian imagination is the bublik, or donut raft. Well, the bulldog made an amazing impression on us the first time we saw it. Of course, we were used to just our regular old rafts, and to see anything right. such a bizarre shape was quite amazing. The bulldog began with experiments to create a kind of anti-roll bar for a catamaran. Then they took tractor tires and tied them together to build a raft that wouldn't capsize and would give some protection to the rafters in collisions with rocks. But the bublik was still capable of getting caught in holes. I was really looking forward to rafting on the bublik. I think it's very strange to be strapped onto a raft. Tomorrow, John will raft in the Bublik for the first time, a craft that he hopes to introduce on other rivers around the world. What's this rapid called in English? In English it means uh, severe rapid. Severe rapid. Probably yeah. it's the first most serious rapid on, uh, on, serious on this one. section. It's really a very, very risky rapid. Uh, uh -huh. yeah, very long. Very long, yeah. Uh, we can see here one memorial. Yeah, a memorial yeah. for someone who died down here. Like uh, any other after, when I come to the next rapid, I feel fear and I have to make this rapid. This is the way to uh, overcome my fear. It's very important for me. And only after I can do that, I can fly. This is a class three rapid, relatively easy. The team can test their rafts and sort out their strengths and weaknesses. It's not really how big the water looks or how exciting the rapid is that decides whether it's a class one or a six. It's really the dangers of the rocks and the logs, the length of the rapid, how cold the water is, and the technical skill 
that's needed to get through. Sasha, as leader, must be aware of the limits of his team's experience. And after last year, he's especially cautious. There are three types of raft in use here. The two-man catamaran, which is extremely maneuverable. The four-man texter, which is like a catamaran traveling sideways. Strong, but not so maneuverable as the catamaran. And the big bullet that can handle most rivers. A river is rafted in sections of rapids, with stops in between to give the safety team time to position themselves on the river banks ahead. Great boat. It might not capsize, but it loves those rocks. These rivers attract many different characters from the cities in Siberia. From coal miners seeking open spaces to doctors looking for a natural high. In the case of Tolya Shulzik, a mining engineer turned smuggler, it's the unquenchable desire for excitement. Tolya is really an incredible character. He makes people laugh, he entertains them. He's a very kind person. He's also a very risk-oriented person. He's out there running vodka, dealing with the mafia, making lots of money, which is kind of a risky deal in this country now. <laughs> they work together, the mafia and the police. They have their posts on the road, and when they see you coming with a truck full of something, the police will pull you over first, have a look, and let you go. And then, just down the road, the Mafia will pull you over again and take their percent and split it with the police. A miner who comes here after his shift can drink four bottles of vodka and each one is half a liter. So that's two liters per person. Да. They taught me for a long time not to believe in capitalism. Eight years in school, four years in technical college, and then six more years in university. And I have to say that I believe what they taught me. The way I feel now about my work that I'm a thief. My brother and I are always arguing about all this business and capitalism. My brother supports the idea of capitalism. He supports business, even though he works in the mine and I sell vodka. Sasha Shulzik, Tolia's older brother, is just one of the kindest people I've ever met. And yet he's also really fearless, really agile. He takes huge risks in his job down the mine. What will a person think about down here, in a terrible place like this? You think about women, our children, our families, the people we love, and we think about rafting. Genya Lebedev is a doctor, but he has the river in his veins. For three generations, his family have lived in the same village, on a tributary of the great Ob River, which crosses Siberia from the Altai to the Arctic Circle. Genya comes from a little bit different philosophy of rafting from the other three guys. Genya's approach was more to be in harmony with nature, to go out and fish, to raft, and to feel the excitement and to feel the challenge and the, the thrill of an extreme situation. 
but he was never at the same extreme edge of risk that, that Sasha and Tolia and Sasha Shuljic would be. This is Krasnohu. It's a herb that used to thicken the blood. And this is Gvozdika. It's a herb that cures arteriosclerosis and other heart problems. Genu runs a sanatorium where stressed out workers and their families could take natural health cures. People return to the hills when they return to nature. That's why I go to the river. The shakedown completed, they are now flying across the Altai for the second stage of the expedition. It was here on the Chulishman River that four of their comrades drowned. They are planning to raft 100 kilometers of the river, from the mountains to a lake. But first, they will build a monument to their comrades. As they arrive at the Chulishman River, the memory of last year's accident dominates their thoughts. No, I really took less of for of my friends. No, I think it's enough, more than enough. It was in the early spring last year, when the river was in full flood, that the accident occurred. Sasha's four-man raft, the Chexter, had missed a stopping point and had carried on down a 15-kilometer rapid with no way of stopping. Another catamaran with two on board and the Bublik with Tolya and Sasha Schulzik and Sergei took off down the rapid to rescue Sasha and his companion, who by then were clinging to an upturned raft. In the melee that followed, the Bublik broke up in a hole and the two Schulzik brothers scrambled onto a rock. But their third man, Pasha, was swept away. Stranded with a broken raft, the Schulziks could only watch in horror as the three bodies swept past. Meanwhile, 10 kilometers down the rapids, Sasha Provatorov was fighting to keep his companion Kolya clinging to the wreckage of the Chexter. You're fighting, you're fighting. Just one moment he was crying, oh, I, I, I cannot, I surrender. So I say, I beat him face two or three times. I said, no, you have to leave, you have to leave. If you have forces, you, you have to fight. They both eventually made it to safety, as did the Schulzik brothers. But the crew of the second catamaran had disappeared. It took them four days to recover the bodies of their friends. I feel responsible, of course. Why? Because I was leader of this and I have to be responsible for, for the life of every person. It's very hard to, to carry this feeling that your friends die, but you are alive. You have to carry this all your life and remember about them, remember about their wives, their mothers, their children and try to help them. It's old Russian tradition to make memorial on a place of death of your friends or of your relatives. So we are now making this memorial to preserve our memory. By the river, they find a tragic reminder. Sergei's guitar. What can I say to mother or to wife or boys of my friends when I bring the body of this friend, of son or husband? It's, you can say nothing.
They chose this spot here because this is the, the frontier between life and death. They think at this point on the river the guys were probably still alive. So it's, it's here that they chose to erect this memorial. Even after the accident, I could not hate whatever. It's impossible to say it. I don't know why. Why does it took my friends? It's hard to explain. Nobody knows why. It was not a river's mistake. It was our mistake. It was, it was fate. I believe in fate. I hope it probably I can meet spirit, spirit or friends of mine there. I can finish this river, I can finish with rapids, uh, they could not finish. For me, they uh, never die. They are like examples of honest life and honest death. No, it's not a terrible way to die. It's a good death. Myself, I've almost died the death several times, and I know how it feels. It's better to die in the mountains than at home from vodka or a cold. But from the point of view of most people, all this is stupid. It's stupid to climb Mount Everest. It's stupid to travel to the North Pole alone. And it's probably even more stupid to raft our crazy rivers like this. Why is it necessary to take such a risk? Hard to explain this. Is this like instinct? Usually I take such a risk to respect myself. If, if even their fa father died, my boys will respect me only if I myself will respect myself. Leaving the memorial, they set off to complete the unfinished river journey. Rivers are not all rapids. There is time for regeneration over the next 30 kilometers of river before the next serious challenge. When you see a beautiful woman at first, or a beautiful rapid, you are overcome with fear and uncertainty in your own abilities to conquer this woman or this rapid. You are uncertain of your strength. What do you have to do? You have to love the rapid and make the rapid love you by showing your technique, your willingness to go through with it, your bravery. And then later, if you are able to go through with it, if you are able to conquer that rapid or that woman, then of course you experience enormous happiness. People who think they conquer the river are wrong. You can conquer the river. You can only find the common language.
The communist system made me who I am. From the very first years in kindergarten, we learned little poems, little songs about Lenin, about his words. The basic idea of the songs was that each person is to everyone else a friend, a comrade and a brother. And that people need to live humanely with each other and they need to help each other. That spirit of collectivism that they brought to me in kindergarten was the same thing that brought me to the river. <laughs> to live without the friends that I've made here, the friends that I've made going down rivers, is something I don't want to do. <laughs> I, it's funny, I always, when I get out here to Siberia, I always feel like this is where the real men are. <laughs> it isn't a like political conviction or anything on my part, it's just, I think it's just like, maybe it's just a female reaction or something. I just like look at these men, I go, wow, whew, those are men. <laughs> They're really men. <laughs> They have reached one of the most dangerous rapids on the river. Kasha, or porridge as they call it, has taken many lives. It's a uh, long, very long, about uh, three kilometers long and very, very difficult and very dangerous rapid. As leader, Sasha declares the river is too dangerous for the Chexta and the catamarans are not suitable. Sasha and Tolia have both rafted this section and they know how long and difficult the rapids are. Four years ago, their bubli caught in a hole and was destroyed. They spent a day stranded on a rock in freezing conditions. Eventually, their comrades were able to rig a rescue line and haul them back to safety. My hours over, I think, in white water. I'll continue rafting, but not so much as, as before. There is no rule that says every rapid must be rafted to complete a river. But to carry on a tradition and to complete the memorial, Sasha has arranged for a younger team to come along and challenge Kasha this year in a newer, bigger bubli. Well, you can see here the younger generation ready to take risks, building new boats so they can take on harder and harder rivers. You see, the people are willing to go out and take those risks. For me, rafting and flight are the same. When they go into a big rapid, the feeling of excitement the feeling of reeds, the danger of flipping the bowl. I think that those moments develop all human quality. qualities there. They test their ability to adapt to difficult situations. They train themselves and develop their muscle. And all this they accomplish through rafting.
As a doctor, I can explain all this. When the person's adrenaline levels are high, it helps to activate all their systems. And to let a little bit more adrenaline into the body is probably a good thing. But of course, in rafting, risk is inevitable. I consider the risk is justified only in those cases when the purpose is achieved by that risk. In this case, the purpose is health. The Chexter team have nominated to take on the next rapid. But a close look reveals a critical problem. The combination of low water and rocks has created a dangerous waterfall. Each member of the team must now decide if he wants to continue rafting the rapid. I don't know if we can do it. Last time we cannot, we slipped last time. So now we, we, we shall try to repeat. What makes it really dangerous is um, this small rock on the, in the water here on the corner. The danger there is that the water's coming very fast through this entrance and it'll push the boats onto this rock here. To avoid hitting that rock and spinning out of control, they'll need to paddle themselves out into the center of the river. So if they get pushed out in the center of the river there, they'll end up amongst these logs and rocks over here. And someone could get stuck or wedged underneath the logs and rocks out over here. So they're gonna have to work very hard to avoid that. And there's a good chance they could slip here on this corner if they don't get across far enough. I think that if, if you don't go through a rapid like this, it remains a blank spot in your life. This is the moment that they get to choose. If you don't want to raft this rapid, nobody can say you raft, you have to raft. No, never. Everybody volunteer and our mothers understand this. excitement, they've not realized that Alec in the orange suit has been injured. In spite of his injuries, he continues to paddle the raft. John, this is Jane. Can you read me? John. Alec's got a broken leg. He needs uh, painkillers right away. They're splitting him up down here. Over. Alec bro broke his leg. Yeah, between Stone and, and Chelsea. A broken leg on a rafting expedition is not so unusual. But with the memory of last year's accident fresh in their minds, it's seen as a warning. Once again, Sasha must carry the burden of responsibility. Everything was thought out correctly. We had foreseen what would happen, and everyone had agreed what we would do. But it didn't work. The current was throwing the boat over to the right more than we'd anticipated. So I thought we should paddle more strongly to the left. But before going into a rapid, there's a law. The commander's command and the people don't discuss the command. It's not in my room to find uh, whose fault it's, it's, um, I don't know. It's, it's happened. So what was the reason, do you think, that it happened? 
Arisen? Arisen? Arisen, Arisen. I could not, I could not ask about the reason. Sasha Provatorov can't find a reason. But Sasha Shulzik feels the accident is a team matter. Working in a team, the responsibility is great. You're responsible for other people. I can't forget those deaths and I feel responsible. I decided not to go further today. I think that I'll never go rafting again. Sasha's attempt to bring the team back together is now seriously in doubt, and his comrades are on the verge of mutiny. But the tribute that they want to pay their friends is pushing them on. It would not be honourable to quit before the last rapids. The Siberians have their own way of dealing with these crises. They hand out the vodka and let everybody have their say. And then a bunyum is built out on the river, so they can let off steam and whip up their enthusiasm for what lies ahead. The psychology after this accident was a uh, little broken and people were a little nervy. So it was necessary to stop today. Uh, good to maybe relax a little. Then they have a party. And if Sasha is correct, by the morning their spirit will be restored. The next morning, the old team returned to the river to complete what could be their last trip together. This trip has been so important to these people. It's really the completion of something that began a long time ago. Now in their lives, this is a time of great change. They don't really need the challenges of Class 6 Rapids anymore. The things they face in their lives give them those challenges now. I really think that the lessons of self-reliance out on the river are going to equip them well for what could be a very difficult future. We're all in the same boat, and we're all floating down this big river called life together, and we can't change that. A good river trip where everything works out is like a song. It all sings itself. It's got its own beauty to it. And I don't think that we'll have trips like that again. was not necessary. They are not necessary for humanity. They are not necessary for people near to me. It's the kind of risk that is only necessary for me, so that I can have the opportunity to feel the real me.
<laughs> it's uh, when you finish the rap, it's, it's something like like so happy, man. Like you can feel it. Life is so sweet, and you can you can feel the test of of, of this life. I think sad about this because our, our is probably the most happiest time or what in the white water. I remember these mo moments when you have, when you could fly. Uh, we can fly, but not so high. <laughs> it's time. <laughs> Добра пора, туман, труха, вода мудра. А что мы смыслили в грехе, а что в гидравлике? Да не словечко в простате, моя прекрасная, Какая чушь, зато уж тема безопасная. Мы все пройдем, жизнь обойдем и впредь условимся. Коль за старое начнем, не остановимся. Грехи, как камни из реки, сосет под ложечкой. Не отпускай мне все грехи, оставь немножечко. Но течь кораблик стал тонуть, стоял и протекал. Мы все спасались как-нибудь, кончалась практика. И я упустил синицу вновь, ловя журавлика. Вот и весь грех, и вся любовь, и вся гиравлика. Бля! Да я, ну! По-пулицке, по-пулицке. Игорюка, Игорюк. Оператору! Мы все пройдем, жизнь обойдем и впредь условимся. Но коль за старое начнем, не остановимся. Грехи, как камни из реки, сосет под ложечкой. Не отпускай мне все грехи, оставь немножечко.